Hi, I would like to tell you about a new functionality in Plinker. Uh, Plinker is an R package to work from Plink from R. So Plink is used in genome-wide association studies. And what I did today was something very fun. Uh, so it's, of course, I already put in how you do a, a simple... So Plink has some examples on their website. I already showed you how to reproduce that using Plinker. Um, I also showed how to do a, an association um, for the files that Plink supplied. Um, and the data was a bit messy, which is just fine, like real data is messy. Uh, but what I've added today is that you can detect an association with a simulated quantitative trait. So in, with, in that way, you can have this ideal data set uh, easily, and Plinker can do that now. So of course you need to load Plinker and uh, what well, assumes it's in, it is installed, else this vignette will do not much. Um, so again, to do an association, we need some parameters. So we need the map table, which is the genetic mapping table, which contains location of the single nucleotide polymorphisms. We need the pedigree table, uh, also contains the, the SNP values, the nucleotides that the, the participants have or the individuals have. We need to have a table with phenotypes, and we need to specify a minor allele frequency. So what I'll be doing, I will be showing these for two idealized settings. And just by calling create demo soc cute params, um, you get those idealized settings out of the box. Um, so what it'll be doing, it will create a, a one SNP and one phenotype that is random, and one SNP and one phenotype that's perfectly additive. Um, so, uh, th so that's what you what you get if you do this. You can add more stuff, like uh, do multiple random traits, those kind of things. Uh, but I'll keep it simple here. So let's first take a look at uh, how ideal our data is. Uh, so this is the mapping table, genetic mapping. So that's brilliant. We have uh, two SNPs, two different chromosomes. Their base pair position is at one and two, just to distinguish it. Zero, which is the position in centimorgans, it's ignored by using zeros. So this is a very dull one. It just shows that we have two SNPs. So the pedigree table is more interesting. So for all per participants, all individuals, we need to know the pedigree. Um, so here we have four, uh, four individuals from four different families. So they're all unrelated. Uh, we ignore uh, if their father and mother were there. Um, they have a sex code of one. I think it's male, but it's irrelevant. The case control code, well, we're doing a quantitative study here, uh, so this can be ignored, hence the zeros. And here we have the SNPs. So there are two SNPs, single nucleotide variant 1, A and B. So A is from, let's say, the ma mother and B is from the father or the other way around, that's irrelevant. Uh, and we have the second SNP, A and B. And we see that, uh, that this is already ideal. So here we have the homozygous, here we have AC, CA dot, so the two heterozygous are in the middle, and here we have another homozygous one and this, this is this is clearly ideal so first it's even alphabetically sorted and also note that the first participant has the homozygotes um, the second the fourth participant also has two homozygotes and the other are heterozygous this is important um, because if they are genetically so similar it's hard to distinguish uh, if SNP1 um, and its phenotype, its first phenotype did nothing, or SNP2, and its related or unrelated phenotype did nothing. So um, it can't distinguish between which SNP did what. Uh, that's for sure, because the, the individuals are genetically, uh, the two SNPs have the same uh, buildup. So you'll see that in the results. So let's take a look at the phenotype table. So uh, for the phenotype table, you need to specify the same individuals, which are exactly these four here. Uh, this is how you they can be identified from the family ID and their within family ID, which should be exactly the same. And here we have a, a random, it's called random because it's completely random. Uh, so it has no relationship to what's on the first SNP. Um, but there's also an additive trait, which has a perfect additive relationship to what's in the second SNP. Um, so the additive is uh, if you have an A, uh, a T means that the, the trait increases by 0.5. So this has no T's, hence a trait value of zero. This is heterozygous for T, so it will have 0.5. This is also 0.5, and this is 1.0. And uh, so you see it's perfectly simulated. Uh, the minor real frequency is set to 5%. Uh, 
And then we can simply detect association using assault, assault Cute, which is the name that Plink uses uh, to do exactly this. And here we can see the results. So it will give us a table, uh, Plink will give us a table of four rows, which is the number of traits multiplied by the number of snips. Uh, so the trait, first trait will associate, try to associate with the first snip, and then the first trait will be associated with the second snip, second trait with the first snip, second trait with the second snip. And because they are genetically identical, it doesn't matter if it's associated with the first or the second snip. We know it's on the second snip, uh, but there's no evidence for that. I know I programmed it to be on the second snip, but because they're genetically identical, you can't find it. Um, so what does it find? So the random trait, uh, which I put on the first snip of the first chromosome, um, has an R squared value, which means uh, how much of the phenotype can be attributed to the snips of 0.07. Um, that is, uh, that's, that's not much. Um, it's, it is random and with, we have a small sample size, so it can actually by accident have some higher values or lower values as well. Uh, the data set's too small to actually do something useful with it, but it's a nice illustration. The additive data set, however, so the additive phenotype, the phenotype that is called additive, um, has a very clear R squared. Actually, it has the highest R squared possible, which means 1.0 means that all of the phenotype can be attributed to genetic variants. Um, so uh, these are NAs, probably because this can't be done because it's too perfect. I'm unsure about that. Uh, regression coefficient is 0.5. I guess it's the additive value that I uh, of a t. I'm unsure about that. Um, so you can uh, actually add multiple random traits if you want. But I just want to show you how easy it is to get this simulated ideal data set uh, from Plinker as it is of now. So that concludes this presentation uh, and I wish you a very good day. Bye.